Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe, which reads in the sub-mod, Sony Plus. I'm your host, Mr. Sony Lover. But, 1951, part 2. Coffee and cigarettes, like my daily meal, uh, for breakfast. The break room of the Kowloon police station housed a coffee machine that spewed slightly rancid brown liquid, coming off from the shift. Lamb hung his coat and took a plastic cup, draining some of that coffee into it. He sat down at a table and drew a cigarette from his breast pocket, slightly draining shift. His eyes felt slightly red, and after this, Lamb would go home and watch TV for the rest of the morning news before collapsing just as the sun rose. He saw his workmates amble about the concrete floor, talking in groups of two about their work, personal lives, and family. The little politics they discussed related to the formation of the new legislative council in Guangzhou. A sense of canine loyalty stuck out, stuck about his feelings as he eavesdropped on the interiors of others' routines. We we're a different breed, he thought, dog, serving a master, faithful to the back. One of the surgeons strode into the room and told him to gather for a meeting in the briefing room. Briefing room. They all drained the cups and dragged the cigarettes followed in the wake of the officer. From this day on, the Japanese inspector said, continuing from the usual bromides of service and loyalty, he would be transferred to Koshi. The strange name of the, uh, uh, was the Japanese on Yomi reading of Guangzhou. The purpose of your transfer is to be the integration, preparation, and performance examination for the upcoming formation of a united independent Guangdong police force, am I understood. We have a positive answer to affirmative statements. Lam raised his hand. He had been on the streets long enough to know that the Kenpai Tai was involved, the armed banded military police wing of the Japanese army, always ready to seize profits where they could. Kowloon was a slum, easy money for the people who knew which buttons to push, which triggers to pull. Does the Kenpai Tai have anything to do with this? The Japanese inspector eyed him, a strange glint on his face. He gave Lam a rice smile. Mr. Kozum, you signed up to follow orders, not question them. Your badge and uniform that you're wearing, that is the insignia of protection given to you by the state. I hope you have not forgotten your oriental orientation sessions. The inspector turned to leave, the whole room rose and left with him. Badge, gun, uniform, all that allow them to see the soul of the pearls. So, right now we're looking at what we've got here. Let's show a little more corruption. Um, quality is 85%. And at this point, you know what? I let the Kenpai Tai test products just for funsies. And release date, uh, well, we're ahead of time already. So, with all that extra political power, we're going to have 100%, 100% toward Iberia. Uh, do we, hmm. Iberia. Well, it should still be... Uh, above two. Um, honestly, part of, this would probably give us the most possible out of everything that we've got. That's actually really cool. And of course, we're here, there. Let's see, corruption is there. And we're doing all right overall. We're doing actually pretty darn decently as we're still doing an investment in these people. And everything's going up. Everything's green. Everything is looking decent. Um, if you want to read this again, investment in the, its people, please go right ahead again. So all should go well, and then we'll do an economic economy of opportunity. The sun rises in the new Guangdong economy, one where success is not measured by a fortune of being Japanese or wealthy Zhujin, but defined by one who takes advantage to other opportunities afforded to them regardless of ethnic origin. Guangdong is open for business and one for all, and for one and one for all, and Marita and Lee wouldn't have it any other way. Especially, they would add, when they have profited handsomely from the whole affair. So, which we actually might do eventually, uh, the Triniton Color T TV. The basic knowledge for color television has existed for years now, but various obstacles have stood in the way of its widespread adoption, namely poor picture quality and small resolutions. But with the launch of Sony's latest product, the Trinit Trinitron, color TV may finally have its moment. Using aperture mass technology, the Trinitron is able to full show full color at a much higher fidelity and greater size than ever before. Blowing the competition out of the water in both picture quality and screen size, at a present 13 inches, the Trinitron stands to bring the magic of Technicolor into the world's living rooms, into the wonderful world of color. Fantastic. So 100% uh, average uh, interest and quality. Fantastic. More Sony seats and a lot of Chong Kong seats. Awesome. So far. Hiroshi Yamauchi sat comfortably at his office in Nintendo's headquarters in Guangdong, reading through various documents that had been given to him. The sound of pleasant music filled the room as he found himself smiling at the latest report that had been given. Nintendo's profits has risen significantly. Gambling profits are up and demand for various gaming equipment has risen. Nintendo was given an opportunity by Sony and Chong Kong and it fought tooth and nail to seize it all. The deals with them and Stanley Hill were godsend for both Nintendo and Yamauchi, who found himself extremely pleased with the results of the hard work he and his company had been given to this far in such a volatile market. From barely scraping by with a meager existence and equally as meager instant rice, to rubbing shoulders with some of the Guangdong's biggest companies and being a rising star in the market. But of course, decadence and complacency, complacency is which leads to ruin. Yamauchi knew this full well as he got to the second half of the report detailing the success of Nintendo's venture in electronics. But as I say, a disappointing failure that quickly soured his mood. But just as the harsh reality of a new venture got him down, Yamachi's spirit once was again raised by the realization that even he had a new venture to begin with. He was steadfast, determined that he would strive for further success and stability, a spirit boasted by all the hardships that he faced in order to obtain the success he had today. How will you play next? I guess we could probably be reforming civil service. This is literally the last one we'd do on that side. Oh, this one too, over here. Oh, compulsory elementary education. Well, that's still be good to do. Educational grant scheme versus child care grant. 
Hmm. 50% of Chong Kong seats. We could try. Guangdong's economic system is stratified, and the majority of the public is inadequately educated and put into jobs. With the Silicon Dream, we found the situation inadequate, and as our economy advanced, we began to demand more skilled workers. Through our Human Capital Advancement Ordinance, uh, we can finally provide six years of compulsory education in Guangdong, which was only a dream. All should go well. CEO Man Tim, an experienced Chung Kong Enterprises stockbroker working in the securities branch, arrived for his first day at work at the Guangdong Future Fund in Koshu. The day was clear, the smog was bearable, and the birds were chirping happily on the, on the palatial grounds of the newly established building. Si Yu was going to be joining a group of the best of the financial experts that the government could find from all the companies, from Chung Kong to Hitachi, with a view on investing in the government's money and making a killing doing it. See you reflected on the situation. In theory, the fund had a social mission, but was effectively operating as a government investment bank, continuing to make money for the government no matter what influence the corporations did and did not exert. See you wondered briefly about the prospect of conflicts of interest as he entered his new workplace. Could he invest in Chung Kong or could the others invest in their home companies? In theory, it'd be possible, though it would also be, certainly break a, be a breach of protocol. See you wondered for some time about the prospect while the elevator took him to his office. Then he squashed the worry and decided he would invest in Chung Kong after all. What did breaches of protocol matter so long as the economy kept going up? The markets kept uh, prospering and Guangdong kept growing. Surely, the red line of growth would continue to go up, right? Uh, see you wrestle with this new doubt for a few seconds before last squashing it. There are no rules in capitalism. And right now, even though this gives 0.05% corruption, I still want to lower this too, so. Ooh, ooh. Hey, look at that! We're already there! Fantastic. I mean, we're barely above. It's 26.51%, 27.12, so we got to do this at least one more time. Or we can do this one next. Actually, we might just do the Yakuza next. Because even though this is barely anything, um. Yeah, yeah. I still want any monthly corruption. Look at that, fantastic. Fan frickin' tastic. Yeah, it actually wouldn't be bad. That corruption is now going down, which is awesome. Hey, we need to list a plus. A little bit of debt. Pay that down a little bit more. We have almost 19 billion in debt. That's not good. Sounds of elation. The teenagers in the urban football field clogged around the newly ported Sony radio. They're all attempting to configure it to find a source for music. They hope to play some songs that they would come to know from the concerts they went to when they were young. One teenager grabbed the instruction manual from the packaging, torn in parts considerably from excitement. From what he saw, however, he could not understand the instructions only, as only English, German, and Japanese were in the manual. Another teenager grabbed it and quickly found the Spanish and Portuguese sections of the manual, which in turn led to the first teenager ridiculed for missing something obvious. They began to argue with each other and place bets on which, whose team would lose. The other teenagers twisted the knob of the radio were in amazement as the radio began to produce a song some appreciated. The Spanish teenagers were elated hearing Y Sabes Bien. But the Portuguese teens were displeased with the music, thinking it wasn't in them, including including them. So they twisted the knob until they found a Portuguese song that would please them, turning the knob twice. The Portuguese teens found that Mas que nada on the radio. The faces of the Spanish teens as they were getting ready for the football match became displeased hearing the songs changing. They looked back at the radio and saw the Portuguese teens happy with their decisions. The Spanish teenagers changed back to the music they liked. After that, the Portuguese teens changed to the radio that to the music they liked. Soon all the teens were fighting for the radio, changing the station back and forth. The Portuguese teens grabbed the radio and began to hog it while the Spanish teens tried to grab it off them. However, after one of the Spanish teens successfully got hold of it, the radio slipped out of their hands and fell into a broken state. And the ball stayed still. Child care grant. Child care is as important as education. Many workers are either panicking because they can't find a place to leave the children, or they can't get back to work. And Lee Kashin's suggestion is to focus on child care and kindergarten and solve these difficulties. Uh, building facilities in the workplace and general subsidies prevent the social cycle from being cut off and help a new generation emerge. Besides, uh, versus educational grants. Hmm. Well, if we can, we'll try this one out, but no guarantees. Because eventually got the Guangdong Country Park. Guangdong becomes industrialized and the economy expands. Cities expand indiscriminately, rapidly not only destroy green areas, but also make the living environment of the city itself bad. As we saw in the example of Central Park, proper green areas greatly improve the conditions and shelters from desolate concrete. The country park ordinance will be enacted to provide a legal framework for the designation, development, and management of rural parks and special zones to preserve and, where appropriate, open the countryside for the great enjoyment of the population. It provides for the establishment of national mar uh, marine park authorities and national marine park committees. JSEA program. So we're, oh, we actually 50 votes. Look at that. So this one will do. Pub replace public education with subsidized hires, lose political power, more stability, which is good for political power. Uh, more research speed costs us more, though. More taxable population, poverty gets better. Academic and research bases also get better. Oh, that's really good. Best in compulsory education dominance hierarchy. Well, you're gonna lose 10 percent, 15 percent. You're gonna lose these guys, so we're gonna need to. We get two more in instead, so we might be relatively okay-ish. How many seats for Sony do we have? You know what? 
I'm gonna do that one anyways, just in case. We should be okay, but you never know. Uh, the Junior Secondary Education Assessment, JSJC, program is a policy aimed at increasing the number of subsidized positions in high schools, allowing as many people as possible access to quality higher education. Essentially, the few people who had access to the higher knowledge, so this sponsorship of higher education universities will form a new class of intellectuals that is different than before. It's completed a clean start, huh? Huh. So now we're 49. Which, because of child benefit, you know, more money, it will spend more money, way more social costs. Almost a billion in social costs. Increase China's approval, decrease Japan's approval, and get pensions probably get being approved as well because this is going to do what well, let's see what it does nice. so in the meantime we got a lot of things done Guangdong public plant he's spending more money why not Despite the vast population of the Pearl River Delta, infrastructure expansion such as power distribution and water supply is slow, with some unfortunate areas with low supply priorities constantly experiencing power outages and water shortages. We'll maintain central power and distribution and water facilities while building power plants that provide sufficient reserve power to the city and reservoirs that provide uninterrupted clean water. So, there's an economy of opportunity first, though. Do we get any votes about whether we want to do that or not? Progressing on Jing, oh boy. Agriculture is slightly worse. It's not ideal, but I don't think it'll happen. So let's go bribe another seat because it's 15 days already. So slightly more corruption. You know what? Dutch can help us out. There you go. Happy to 68, everybody. Your list plus, so not bad. Oh, it goes up and goes down. Hey, messages in data storage. Very nice. How can they fit that? Fit how many sheets of paper? Nice quality. Goes up and hey, more to the power. Oh heck yeah! Yeah. So which one will we work on first? Twenty six. That's a lot. Oh, we're almost we're almost there already. Let's take well, quite a bit more time. So this one will be good to do first. I'm tempted to do this one. Actually, how much support do we have? We're almost maxed out. We're so close to being maxed out. It's not funny. I do this one. 1952 part one. Summertime walk. Gleaming neon suns uh, in striking color against the black drop of the stars. The city shredders, trucks carrying rock and sand stretched by the pavements. Water ran down inside of buildings and flowed smoothly into the drains, washing away the graffiti and the soapy foam. Scaffolding clambered alongside the concrete and steel frames of prospective factories, department stores. Bursts of arc welders flared and was away in long distance. A soft rain pattering the scene. The wind blew seaward, shivering in his coat. Lambs took his, shook a cigarette off the pack, lit it, and dragged it languidly, drinking the air and smog as it congealed in the city's breath, drawing it in and out. Another day at the station, he entered the precinct and hung his coat at the nearby hangar. There felt a little stale, familiar sensation after a year on the force. He was a sergeant now, a position that bristled with new responsibilities. Fresh-faced Chinese recruits from the upper river turned in his squad, still green, much too young to see the other faces of the province. This evening, after his patrols, he had to give presentations to these people. First, notice the vagaries of policemanship, squatters, construction hazards, licenses, and the basics of handling those matters. Easy stuff. The next subject was a quite a lot harder. Heuristics and logic. Intuition and investigative sense. Just like in Sherlock Holmes, he said, detective work requires certain capacity of deduction on your part. Once you've been there at the scene, gathered up the evidence, sent them to processing, and did your paperwork, there it is. A pattern emerges. You question yourself, you question your partners, you call up the witnesses and bring what little emerges. Once the thread passes through the eye of the needle, everything is easier. Throughout the pattern, after the correct suspect, self case. The younger policeman gave a little applause, and Lamb gave a faint smile in return. All of them were Chinese. That was indisputable. Beyond that bond of loyalty and appreciation, hour, lived in the shape of something greater, something ever more ineffable, yet tangibly sharp. What was it? For what is change in man but the caprice of time? A compulsory education ordinance passes. Look at that. A compulsory education ordinance was passed today after a lengthy debate in the Lidco, especially the provision that all citizens of Guangdong, regardless of class, must receive compulsory education. Masara Ibuka. Masaru Ibuka and Kenichiro Koma argued that it was a terrible measure that would only make those with clear talent ineligible for benefit and support. But they faced contradictions of their own. First, Fujitsu talked about being an engineer's paradise, but didn't seem to want to expand and extract more engineers. Second, Koma's com comments imply that Hitachi's contract workers don't need excessive training. As the Sagan dream grew bigger, 
There are only as many intellectuals and engineers as Guangdong needed. Marie Tequia's argument that universal education investment could change the situation for the better was made all the more convincing by the large number of leading experts in Guangdong's prosperity. Marita said that his new ordinance proved a Cantonese spirit that everyone could be given the opportunity to make a greater contribution to society through education and that they would strive for it. Kuma was unable to say anything under the glare. Masaru Ibuka appealed for amendments for more favorable to the Japanese, but they were rejected, and finally made cheers from the Sony Chung Kong delegations and enough rebel votes from Matsushita and Fujitsu. A compulsory education ordinance was finally passed into law. Education, tsunami is upon us. Look at that. Holy crap, that's, ex that's extreme. Well, what do you expect? So after that, we gotta talk, start talking about money, but we can wait on that, you know? Money. It is what it is. I guess we're a form of civil service. Mm. Guangdong's government has often been accused of being a colonial administration. And all but Nam dominated staff, middle levels, but Japanese Japanese trained bureaucrats who answered to borrowed rooms in Tokyo and Koshu. No matter how many Zushin are rare, educated Chinese patrol the streets and file papers as lowly patrolmen or clerks, will never earn the trust of the population so long as they see the Japanese as masters of Guangdong. Both the Shiodo are backers in the Zhujian and Chinese communities that our promises will be kept in to ensure that our new police policies are directed as effectively as possible. We must turn our eye to just in the composition of Guangdong, civil service, our public face to the world, and a prominent means of social advancement for those Zhujian and Chinese with means. New paradigm, uh, Li Chun went on a lunch break from his job to go look at the skyline of Koshu. The sky was clear for once and smogged and obscured his vision as he did 90% of the time. Looking around the skyline, he noticed it was clearly different from the last time he looked around. New skyscrapers and office buildings surrounded him. And bamboo scaffolding abounded. Under the rule of the new chief executive, there was no more talk of people. The same people who would fulfill, fulfill the offices, Chun thought, striking a rich by working for Chung Kong, Sony, the new government. New Zhijin corporations were being established, she had heard, usually with a working relationship with Sony, Chung Kong, the two giants of um, Guangdong. Looking back down the street, though, he saw a mass of smartly dressed people opening, uh, openly speaking Cantonese in a way they had not been able to since the 30s. This pleased him. What well, wrinkled him, however, was an incessant bragging about the recent business plans, which made fun of Chun himself for being dressed like a laborer, which I knew he was. It stung, Chun thought. It was an educated man's game, a Sony Chung Kong's man game, and Lee Chung was neither. That stood him out of the corridors of privilege and power, but he had more money now than he ever had before him. And he could not help but feel proud of the advancement of his fellow native Chinese and even the Zhu Perhaps Chun, I suppose, even Hei or Wai, could join the ranks of the newly employed or empowered business people he saw. That thought in mind, he dug in. Cantonese question. Simple fact of the matter is that while Japan, Japanese is the lingua franca, the co-prosperity sphere, and language of business, the vast majority of the people of Guangdong speak Cantonese. The government of Guangdong has, until now, remained firmly on the side of the Japanese in all official transactions, as suspected of the governing authorities in the sphere, but has done little to bring the government closer and make it more relatable to the people. But it has also created opportunities for communities, and criminals have slipped through the cracks of our administration, with a particularly unscrupulous among them using their language expertise, to maintain and extort the people ostensibly under their care. To officially recognize Cantonese as the language of the state when it only allows us to bring these groups under the eye of our government and serve as a powerful symbol of our commitment to a more local government, but also serve as a powerful distinction with the neighboring Republic of China, that is, if the Japanese don't throw a fit first. Our choice for the language of government will be heavily scrutinized, within and without, but choose carefully. Song Ji Hing Lung Li Kuxing has finished the hard work of surveying a new office tower he was building in Koshu for his ever burgeoning financial and real estate empire. Um, and is very happy with the way things are down. Li knows with a smile that was a matter of time before all Guangdong would be eating out of his hands with his friend Morita's approval. He got on countless sweetheart deals from the government. He and Morita have started from the very bottom and made it to the top, and now are so safe that nothing could ever threaten them again. Li looked around and saw a regular laborer, sitting down to eat lunch and staring up at the new building Li was building. He reminded himself twenty years back, a poor factory owner, struggling to get by with the limited education he had. Um, Dreaming of something more, remember the his and Marita's first meeting on the streets of Koshu with how hard work and harder study they claw themselves up to the heights of greatness? Uh, looking at the laborer again, he wondered that man uh, would be tomorrow's next tycoon. If that was the case, Lee Valley would help them and begin by hiring him first. It was his duty, Lee thought. The duty of a successful superior businessman helped those not as fortunate as him. Not everyone was a competitor. He could help them out of the goodness of his heart and turn, surely they would help him back. With that thought, he went back to work as we have a sip of our black tea. Turning... Uh, Guangdong to a little oasis here. Don't look at how much we have in the yearly deficit. Oh my god. Ooh, that's going to spike hard. Not good. Wow, inflation's insanely high. Holy crap. From, okay, so we have a lot of inflation due to growth. We have base inflation rate, and then for the natural variation of inflation. Oh my god. That's actually really high. Which shrinks our economy. Oh god. 
Moritio Kiyoru was out of the Consul General Takashima's office as an impressive place with its slit windows and prevailing smoke, but Takashima himself had never been that way. The Consul General was, as you expect from a bureaucrat of his kind, a relatively tired man with spectacles and the prevailing air of wishing he was anywhere more, more prominent. It was irritating at times, of course. Um, friendly at others and generally cooperative, but frightening? No, never. Um, Takashima was short, nothing like his military counterpart, General Nagano Shigeto. Stood less than he leered over his desk, eyes like steel in a suit to match the color. Beams of light slashed across the silhouette, illuminating a face which he'd seen at all. The mouth drawn into a thin line of distaste. Chief executive for once squirmed a bit in seat under the pressure. General Nagano took that the consul general is not available. <clears throat> no, Nagano replied, his voice flat. We will discuss a topic of organized crime in Guangdong yourselves. Organized crime, Marito Kiao could see where this was going already. You have a proposal, I assume. A suggestion that IJ is more than capable of controlling uh, this epidemic, yet... You do not allow our forces to aid your overwork, let's say, police forces, why? Sovereignty General, really the answer is so much more than that, like how stock prices didn't like, to, like martial law, or how Murray Kiao didn't relish in the idea of waiting through blood to get to work. He knew and got out knew that too. This time holding his posture as the other man leaned in. Hmm, can't even speak your mind, you really all are all roaches. Well, this is really high, so it's, it's so high. 20% reduction. So 20%, if we get 20%, up to 20% reduction, 20% of this would be what? 2? 2%? 2%. Well, 2% less would help us out here. So we're at 1% increase on GDP growth. This would give us at least 2%, total of 3% if we really wanted it. Counter pennies, that's probably good to two. We're going to reduce, ooh. Or we could just go screw everything and just go straight for poverty. Fight poverty? National poverty rate costing us 0.5% increase on our GDP. So we lose one and a half growth for helping poverty. Power things up. I think I want to reduce inflation. We're going to reduce inflation. 20% of this, 20% of that, 2%, slightly more than 2%, maybe, which is better than 1% growth. So we'll see how that turns out. Balance of trade. Mm, yes, that certainly sounds agreeable. Song finally replied, and Marie Takeo's jaw practically hit the desk. What was this? What was happening? The chief executive entered this meeting with folders in hand, no expectations of minds he had learned to do whatever. He mentioned economic cooperation with the Chinese consulate. It was always something that this opted had to break up whatever the line of attack he took. Tariffs, Chinese worker treatment, or a meaningless piece of bureaucracy back in Nanjing. The consul general had an encyclopedic knowledge of delaying tactics and the skill to use it, utilize them constantly. Yep. All of a sudden, it was as if he replaced with someone who Mori Takeo could work well with. It was also good to realize, uh, suddenly, stiffening his chair as he watched the consul's eyes flicker over the paper. There was something coming. Do you have any more comments? He mumbled quietly, hoping his gut was simply misjudging the situ situation. It only took a moment for the consul to prove his instincts right. One thing, yeah, the consul general commented, straightening up in his chair, your corporations, Fujitsu, Sony, Matsushita, the like, and enjoy generous subsidies to bolster their profits. If Chinese corporations are to compete in such an established market, it's only fair that we receive the same subsidies. Profit for Guangdong, profit for China, profit, victory for us both. Mirita Keo frowned. You know very well that Tokyo backs are corporations I expect me to maintain their dominance. Allowing competition won't cause too much trouble, but giving Chinese companies Japanese money is a different question. Yes, yeah, so I'll imagine it'll cause some fuss, Song replied in a genial tone, but you're a businessman, surely you can see the opportunities for the Chinese market here. And you too could use a better trade relations with China, yes? Hundreds of millions of customers just across the border, money in hand, waiting for products from Canton and Guangdong. Please, Chief Executive, consider my proposal. Perhaps I can see some of these restrictions, if nothing else. Um, you know, it's okay. 85%? It's alright. As long as they both like us, right? Right? 300 days left, not bad. Yeah, let's see what about this. So we reduce our growth technically, but whatever. Let's see how we end the month. From the civil service, a radical proposal. Yeah, let's see what we can do here. 21 billion in debt, Jesus Christ. Oh. It's all for the people, remember that. It's all for the people. Marie and Lee had expected their next proposal to meet resistance, so opening up to the higher ranks of civil service and of the police of the locals, to those vetted carefully for both competence and reliability, represented a sea change that dented the Japanese prerogative to senior positions in the government. But they had expected how much resistance there would be, and the meeting had dissolved into this acrimony nearly instantly. But she had hot on and on, playing for time. The office argument against this proposal, and I'm not saying I'm proposed, is that even if you open up these positions, how many locals are both qualified and ready to fill them? Shouldn't we start from there? You assume that there's going to be any more, anyone qualified to fill them at all, Ibuka had scoffed at that. I'm not ruling it out, but from what I've seen, I have my doubts. You can rule it out, Ibuka, Koma commented acidly, a smile twisting as he shot Lee a poisonous glare. There are no good Chinese professionals, either here or Harbin, I assure you. Lee resisted the temptation to throw a glass of water in Komai's face, as well as the urge to shoot a worried glance at Marita. To do either would be 
but betray uncertainty, a weakness they cannot afford. It might be a novel concept to some of you, but I think an employee has as much stake in a company as an employer, as an employer Marito pointing his finger, at the simple tycoons that make his final point. If we don't give the people a stake in their own lives, they'll, then they'll demand one by force sooner or later. Once more under the breach. Trust the core. You're going to need this one, please, good head. So we're going to try. Because um, this one, we're going to lose uh, Japanese support, but increase Zuzhin support, even though we're maxed out. We're going to try full localization. Yeah, we want more admin efficiency to improve. Yeah. We can slowly improve here. Yeah. Lee Kishin argues that if we fully unlock the potential Guandan's people, and win the stress and loyalty, we must give them a sub substantive say in how their affairs are governed. It will not be instant, nor will be grand scope, but we will commit to opening the most senior positions in receivable service to all backgrounds, including native Chinese and Zhujin, and build our own institutional expertise without relying on Tokyo. The Japanese expatriates and senior mandarins will detest us for us, no doubt, but the journey to a better future begins with a single step, and we must be the ones willing to take it. We'll make the necessary adjustments to make Cantonese an official working language at Guangdong. And this one gives us onwards and upwards, and fully localizes the civil service so that Zhujin can be in all ranks and positions. Yeah. Sure, why not? Where are we at with this? Oh, 44 votes. That's not good enough. So, hopefully we don't need to bribe anybody, but we'll see. Oh, obviously. Um, ah, we're good. Can I lower Yakuza's support here? Japanese expat support. Decrease, nah. Well, we're about nine away. So it's going to take us some time to do that. Go, so let me just close out of that for now. It's fine. Product cycle. Research decisions. Decreases it. Decreases. Uh, don't really want to decrease anything else here. Monthly audio. One and a half, one and a half. No, it's not worth it. We'll do that one. There you go. Oh, we can purge corrupt officials now. No, oh, we can do that too. I'm very unified the rest of parties. Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, we got the roads done. Okay. Well, for the most part. Here's an army base next. Where do you want the army base? Koshu? Choshu? Yeah, Choshu. And then, uh, school in Mumbai. There we go. Fuel game bonuses, current game bonuses. Yeah, okay. you build a rubber factory if you really want one. You probably don't need one, but whatever. If the reactor, we don't need more of these. But that's all right. Radar stations are funny. 1952 part two. Down the docks by the riverside piers, boxes of heroin, boxes of cocaine piled high, guns, mostly old C 96 C's, and wartime Nambu pistols laying a rope beside the illicit drugs. Um, Japanese officers on the scene. Minutes earlier, Sergeant Lam Hao Soon arrived on the scene with a patrol wagon. Red and blue flashed intermittently into the warehouse of which the Japanese now hauled workers and clerks. Hands off, mechanics, worker said, throwing off the grip of a Japanese police officer who had held him. The officer nonplussed. Uh, as his response, he drew his gun. I sh said, he shouted above the din of the sirens, you're under arrest. Now move along if you don't want your brains all over the floor. The side of the farm did little to terrify the worker. Um, but who popped his chest as if daring the officer to shoot. Lamb ran between them. Stop, he said. Stop, he said again. The seven Japanese. He turned to the Japanese officer. I'll handle this. In one fluid motion, Lamb shoved the worker away from him and spun him around. A swift clock, or a clink of the handcuffs, following shortly after. He read the worker's rights twice, once in Chinese and one other in Japanese. After hauling the cursing worker to the patrol wagon, he joined the circle of police detectives who surrounded the evidence. This is a mess, the inspector said. Thrush goes underneath his eyes, kilograms of illicit drugs, a host of guns that works. This is a crisis. He wiped the sweat from his brow, witnesses uncooperative, we have no leads. Not necessarily. Lamb found himself saying to his own surprise, we can get manifests of recent deliveries to this warehouse from the clerk. We wanted to try and see the patterns turn up. Memories flash before his eyes, there's one hole in our net. Rural Guangdong on police, wild, in lieu of evidence, we should look there first. Silence. Nods. The inspector looked at him, I was appreciated more, Officer Hayashi, if neither you or your fellow officers speak out of turn. Shock of anger ran through Lamb's fist, but he let go. Indignity is a privilege of the oppressed, not the oppressor. So yeah, working on it. Ah, so how much do we need? 46 billion? Well, we're at 49 billion. Nice. Taking charge. Ah, uh, Lamb House soon had never paid the job. Openings very much mine. Posted on the cork board hanging next to the stairwell in his precinct. Beyond a certain point, everyone knew you're not going to get anywhere if you weren't Japanese or a connection to the Legco, no matter how well any Zuzhin spoke or wrote the language. It was useless to try, so why worry? But everything that happened since Marita Kao had become chief executive had an escape lands to notice either. From workers' pay to health and safety, the chief executive and his lieutenants were pushing for change. Of the kind that even Lamb hesitantly proved of, even if he thought they were courting disaster. 
The bullpen had been abuzz with the rumors that the next round of personal changes and promotions would see qualified as union employees and officers allowed to advance into the middle of the management. And beyond F. Merriton. There would be an exam and interviews in Cantonese. Now, whether one was excited or uh, irritated or varied, but it was all anyone could talk about. It was all Lamb could think about over lunch, mulling over the promotion. Uh, the sergeant was absentmindedly swirled Cogni in his bowl. He could use the pay, and if it came with more responsibility, well, that just meant he could do things this way, giving orders rather than just taking them. It was worth a shot. 10% reducing it by that much. Multiply it by 10. Let's see if it actually does anything. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Inflation's looking a little better, though, already. Yeah. Yearly deficit. Mm. But the poverty reduction is looking fan frickin tastic. Love it. Oh, that's not good. Oh, crap. Well, then so be it. The Civil Service Ordinance. Life in Guangdong is not easy, despite our best efforts and atmosphere of profits prioritized above all else. Um, there's so much we can ask from the collective effort at the highest levels where competition is the way of life. But we've taken the first step. And to show the people that the government can and will provide an opportunity for a better life. As a show of solidarity to the people of the erstwhile nation, we can now call the people to persevere to direct their energies from simple survival to prosperity. To take ownership, however partial, of your home, is to commit yourself to its survival, and we must ask the same in the Zhujin in Chinese. Lingua Franca. Well, the government's decision is to extend official status to the Cantonese language. Uh, the question now arises of exactly what the status should be. We should classify it. We could classify it as a working language, so it allow it for use as instruction in schools, the creation of Cantonese versions of various official documents, and the average citizen may need to fill out, and the hiring of Cantonese-speaking bureaucrats in public-facing positions, however. All official government positions or documentation will still be in Japanese, which will remain the primary official language of Guangdong. Uh, these changes will make navigating a governing institution significantly easier for Cantonese-speaking citizens, while sparing us the burdensome task of adopting Cantonese as a true official language, however. Continue to privilege Japanese over the like, local language, even if only internally could, still send the wrong message. Keeping official records, only Japanese will make them inaccessible to large swaths of the population, hurting a push for greater transparency. The way around these problems will be adopting Cantonese as a second true official language of equal status to Japanese. This would require us to create official Cantonese copies of all government records and paperwork, an expensive and time-consuming task, but one that may pay off by making a government closer to our people. A working language would do fine. Semi-official. Cantonese will not be used in uh, documentation and will be used as a semi-official language. Declare Cantonese an official language. Oh, we gotta do that one. 46 seats. Actually, that might be more than what we started with. Lab efficiency will still improve. Yeah, about right. How many seats do we have from Sony and them? Oh, we still have five more seats we can get from these guys and two more. So, five, seven, and then we have no seats here already. And we're gonna lose three seats here. Hey, you never know. We'll see how things turn out in the end. Then in the Lion Rock Spirit. Life in Guangdong is not easy, despite our best efforts, and the atmosphere of profits prioritized. I already read this one. Yeah, I already read this one. My bad. I read that one already. Um, eventually, we need to definitely do that. maintaining our solvency. If these two clouds start saying anything, is that we cannot be over reliant on Japan for the means of our government survival. When the flow of money from Japan stopped, Guangdong nearly lost everything, and we're still picking up the pieces today. More worryingly, for the vision of Morita and Lee have for Guangdong to become reality, the government's expenditures are certainly to grow still further. Exploring options for financing the government without the assistance of Tokyo is more than just a good idea. It is of the utmost importance. Recall 1953. After a long day I spent meeting suppliers and customers, Lee Kishin blinked as his eyes adjusted to the gloom of his factory. The irradiated heat from the few rows of machinery matched the muggy heat outside as plastic was quite liquefied to be poured into molds and painted by hand, creating artificial flowers and eternal bloom. Oh, look how much corruption we're losing every month. Nice. Even as the workers started to leave, Lee walked into the back room to sit opposite of Morita Akeo. A flicket and apicus, sitting in gray coveralls under the lethargic spin of a ceiling fan. I didn't know we were doing so well, Lisa, peering over Murray's numbers. Startlingly high, are you sure? It's not Murray to try to reply in Cantonese. Before switching to Japanese, it's not the flower. It's the cost of producing the other thing. The other thing that Lee understood was Murray's transistor radio prototype, sitting in a teal plastic case of Lee's design. It was a product of hours of trial and error, promising him more than simple survival. Murray bowed his head dejected. Even if we sold everything to President Lee, it wouldn't be enough. The reality of the business was stark. And the Japanese had no sympathy for the blacklisted Marita and even less for Lee, which left I could reach out to. No Marita said weekly, no gangsters, what happens if we fail? A short silence fell over the two, broken only by Lee's reply, what do we have to lose? So right now where are we at? Uh, 20%, 5 times more. Yeah, we'll see. Referendum of Transnistria. Huh. But if this will get more growth, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe that was a mistake going to counter our pennies. Maybe. Onwards and upwards. Lamb heard the commotion well before he knew what would happen, and he returned to the 
from a beat to the cheers and clapping of his colleagues huddled around the radio in the center of the bullpen. Did you hear how Hal soon a fellow officer hurried over and leaned against his shoulder, uh, whispering conspiratorially into his ear? Starting tomorrow, the employment restrictions have been lifted. Japanese lieutenants are crapping themselves. <laughs> Lam uh, stopped in his tracks, just in the news. Finally, responded, good. That's not all, Lee uh, Quan Hao, you know, the captain appointed by Lee Kaching, is formally putting his name to become a deputy commissioner. Uh, he's going to become one of us, a deputy commissioner. Lee, Lam shrugged weakly. Do you think he really has a chance? His colleague slapped him on the back with Chief Executive Marita and Lee Kaching. On the selection committee, maybe we'll get a fair hearing. It's better than anything else we've ever had. Um, as, as his colleagues walked away, Lamb walked back to his desk, fishing out a set of papers stored neatly in a drawer. He read over the entry one more time in the cleanest Japanese he could manage, and then made for the stairs. Yeah, we'd, I'll do whatever it takes to keep this one here, so. Right now, we're, we're, hey, we need one more. That's fantastic. Let's go increase the Chinese support anyway, so I'm okay with spending a little bit here. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely okay with spending a lot here, then. Um, so let's close out of this real quick. So Yakuza. We decrease Yakuza. You know what? Okay, what else are we going to do with that? Makes them a little weaker here. It's fine. Triads. Can we weaken the, uh, these guys here? You know what? Okay. I'm okay with that too. Do whatever we can to increase our... Uh, Police presence everywhere. Hey, LBJ. Good job, uh, Jumbo. Yeah, so here we're actually really close. Seven? Well, not really close, but we're close. We'll get there. Ooh, do we get something here? No, there. Uh, protecting Matsushita's interests. A visit from Matsushita was always enough to make Morita apprehensive. A visit from Matsushita, in which he promised good news, was good enough to make Morita want to crawl under his desk, but uh, here he was, shifting awkwardly in his chair as Matsushita entered his office. When he was taking the seat Morita pointed him to, Matsushita began his proposal with a charm of smile. I want to mince words. I know you have a proposal coming up to the Council to reform the civil service, and I know you don't have the votes to pass it right now. Well, she just smiled wide as he saw Murray's eyes narrow. I'm willing to give you these votes. In exchange, he produced a manila folder and laid it on Murray's desk for these concessions. Murray examined the contents of the folder. Well, she had picked out several of his own people to fill key new, new key positions in the civil service that would open up if the bill passed. Murray considered on one hand, I was pure glad handling, naked corruption that stood against everything he believed in. On the other, he really didn't need, need these votes. Give exclusive rights. 6% now. No, no. I'd rather just fry Rome like I see. There you go. Oh, we got it. And we got one in this maintain solvency and whatnot. I'm going to save these for later on, maybe. These are pretty easy to do. And, and, oh, hello. What's going on here? Alright, not bad. So, after that, we did all this, which is fantastic. Our debts with Zhu Jin. Our reward is Zhu backers. Japanese dues, or dues of the Japanese. Get 0.35 liquid reserves, 0.25. Contracts for sale, 0.4. Versus open the options, 0.55. Our debts with the Zushim. There still remains the issue of resolving the leftover insolvencies from the Yasuda collapse. Those firms that came into the state receivership during the crisis and remaining on our books. Selling off these the willing buyers will provide us a quick injection of funds into Guangdong's coffers, but more importantly, if we sell these valuable assets to the Zhuzhen businessmen of Guangdong, we can kickstart the foundations of a local economy that will undoubtedly be far stronger than those tied to foreign capital. The plan leaks. Murita held enters the office to find Li Kishin standing over his desk. What a newspaper have you seen in Sakao? Oh, look at this. Murita shook his head and taking the paper from Li's hand. The headline read, Murita plans to repair Japanese from Guangdong government. Below in small text was Letko outrage. Marita blood turned to ice. How did the press back in Japan get a hold of this and purge? All I was trying to do was make the government better reflect the people it served. This wasn't some kind of tyrannical power play. What can we do about this? He asked Lee. Lee looked down. <clears throat> the way I see it, we have two options. Uh, we can rewrite the bill to implement the reforms more slowly, let the Japanese bureaucrats get phased out more naturally. That should keep Letko officer back. But we mean betraying the local Zhujin who we promised new openings in the civil service to. We also just stick our guns and hope the media and politicians in Japan find some new scandal to pontificate about. He shook his head and the league puts us in real bond. What do you think of Kale? I got going down with them. Added provision to the bill for slower rollout of education. Or re slower, slower, slower reforms now. Nah, we're good. We'll be fine. Probably. Maybe not this time. We're just staring at the phone on his desk, considering. The situation in the Legislative Council was getting tense. He wasn't sure he would have the votes to pass the civil service reform, but they were to pull strings to try to shore up the votes he needed. 
but there's still more he could pull. One of them was the Ibuka Master. Despite their personal history, Ibuka showed a willingness to work with Marita on certain political initiatives in the past, as long as there was something in it for him. Marita's eyes stared back at him, reflected in the phone's polished surface. Sure, Ibuka was a businessman at the end of the day, and he would be overlooking personal matters in the name of profit, but this went beyond personal. This kind of civil service reform was exactly what the arch-conservative Ibuka had spent his entire career fighting against. Marita turned away from the phone with a sigh. Maybe time, sometimes it's not worth the effort. Wow, it's a lot of deficit. Yeah, maybe it was definitely not worth going to trying to reduce inflation. I was just like, wow, that's really bad. Wow. A blind eye, Mori did want to burn the paper in Sam. That was a letter from Hitachi, and that alone made him feel as if he was cursed for even touching him. But the contents of the letter were even more disturbing. No, in it, no less than Komaki Nichiro himself was offering political support to Morita's proposal for civil service reform. Morita would simply normally accept votes from any source, however, unpleasant. Komaki's proposed concessions in exchange for his support turned his stomach. He demanded they be given the right to employ whatever security forces he saw fit, and that these forces be given broad autonomy with Hitachi property. Marita knew what that meant, that Komai's relationship with uh, Kenpai Tai was an open secret, and also demand that Marita allow them to use Hitachi as a front for their operations in Guangdong without any official oversight. It was disgusting, unethical, and even dangerous to the very security of his administration, but still, to give him the votes. No. We don't need him. We literally don't need him. So. 1952, Part 3. Downtown Chao Zhao, a downpour of the off the walls, down uh, the pavements, and into the trains, hammering on the roofs, and the shop fronts, and the ponchos of the police officers tasked with sweeping these low high rise buildings, or low rise buildings, and warehouses. Lamb directed officers to set up checkpoints at crossroads and junctures, the archways were struck against the electric lights. <coughs> Uh, despite the dramatic nature of the operation, the work was still quite mundane. A squad approaching a building ra radioed their progress and would usually return a negative response. Cruising in his patrol car, Lamb passed by the house that faced southwards towards the sea. Rainwater slid down the slope of the ga gabled roof. The windows dark. Where did it all go wrong? So long ago, a cradle of warmth forever denied to him, standing low and sad against the rain and gale, and those days were no more. As he rounded the corner leading uh, down slope and away from that house, he spotted a few figures that scampered away at his approach. The building that lay beside where they had once stood had made the warehouse uh, had the make of the warehouse. Large two stored and a truck parked itself in front of what the lamb surmised was a transport gate. He reared a squad unmarked warehouse near the old house just down the street, he said to the receiver. Around the corner you won't miss it. I'm going in out. Wait for backup, the reply said, hacking its way through, ignoring the message lamb. Uh, put the receiver back into a slot and walked out of the car, flashlight in hand. Uh, he checked the truck, crates of guns, bags of cocaine, heroin, intriguing. He let himself in through an ajar door beside the building. Stacks of guns, stacks of drugs, in the middle of it all, a silk spinner. A bolt of silk in his spokes. The periphery of the scene, Lamb saw the silhouette of a man whose black back was turned against him. Freeze, Lamb said in Cantonese. Put your hands above your head and make no sudden movements. Figure dead as he was told, now turn and pace me slowly. No sudden movements. Lamb knew where the figure was familiar. He'd seen that build somewhere before. Ah, Tan, he said, or tempering the shock in his voice. What are you doing here? Friends of yesteryear, foes of a new age. As much as I want to do this one. Do I need to keep the political power? Technically, yeah, I need to spend it here. Ah, I can't do it next. We're getting more equal here. It's changed by every month. That's nice. There you go. Hey, it's four away. We're four away. Hey, it passes. Look at that. So, the service ordinance has at least partially integrated the bureaucratic apparatus of Guangdong has passed. And its originators, Li Kaxing and Chief Executive Marita Kao, were ecstatic. Marita was on cloud nine as the votes were counted and came out in his favor. As the Sony delegates cheered, Lee came up behind him, slapped his back, and said in Japanese with ear earshot of a microphone, That's a big effing deal. Marita smiled in joy, but as Lee continued on with what he was saying, Marita looked at his opponent. Kumas suddenly stood up and left, but his focus was on his former friend and worst enemy, Ibuka Masu, who was fuming after having spent his last speech, trying in vain to delay, giving Zujin and Chinese a vote. This too pleased him, but whether it was angering Ibuka or getting praise from Lee meant more to him was unclear. Lee was beyond ecstatic. Chung Kong's corner of the Leco was out of their seats, jumping and cheering in joy. He walked over to Marita and said, It's a big effing deal, okay? We pulled it off. We're finally doing some good for the people. Marita smiled and nodded, but Lee noticed that his attention was divided. When he saw that Marita's focus was on his hated enemy, he smirked and nodded his understanding. We can talk about the fine points later. Nice. So, more support, of course. Admin efficiency really gets to become better, which is good. And that's pretty much it. Spend more money, of course, but what else is new? Nice. Focus on the Japanese expatriate community, which actually wouldn't be probably a bad idea, but open at the auctions, which would be better to do because we can, because we have already maxed out support anyways, which makes sense. Our debt with the Zujins. We're trying to sell to the Zujins and help them out as much as possible, even at the cost of not getting gaining as much, I guess. Increased liquid reserves. 
financial solvency and liquidity ordinance, but contracts for sale first. One of the greatest resources available to the government is the sheer number of land available as a public asset, which we can sell in parcels to the willing corporate bidders looking to participate in con public construction and industrial development projects. There is far more land that the government can feasibly develop on its own, but the private sector can certainly hold, provide a helping hand for a price. However, we have no interest in a free-for-all bidding war that will lock out the general public from enjoying the fruits of said development. We will invite companies to bid on a set of contracts for public-private uh, public partnership projects. While this will likely be a less rapid way to raise funds for the government, but at least we can direct the flow of investment and project practices to reduce any harm to the local Chinese and Zhujian population. Yeah, that'd be good. I'll reform the civil service as much as I want to. We don't have to do that one anymore. So, to new hype. In the aftermath of the passage of the Civil Rights Ordinance, Hayashi Kozen received the promotion of which he had just dreamed for so long. Granted, it was not all sunshine and rainbows, but as far on the first day of the job, the Japanese majority among the more senior officers made their distrust clear. There are insinuations and side comments about him being merely a diversity hire and unfit for the job, and once or twice he could have sworn that a slur or two was being uttered behind his back, but all that rubbish mattered very little to him for two reasons. First, he was used to being slurred left and right. Second, for all that he did did not show it, this promotion had made him as much on Cloud9 as Murch himself had apparently been on when the ordinance was passed. Uh, the next day, the second, second day on the job, he met with Yasukawa Yoshiko wearing his new badge. They talked about the latest slaps du jour in the Legco and in Guangdong High Society, and then moved on to the streets of Koshi for usual rounds. As he escorted his charge around and kept order in the streets, Kozin felt for the first time that he wanted to do his job exactly right. This, f this feeling intensified the next day when his superior granted him the responsibility over his own patri patrol unit effective immediately. Um, now, Kozin was really eager. Perhaps he could uh, at least start making a difference. A well deserved promotion. What is this one? From the natural variation of inflation. Oh. I don't know. Maybe I. I was too radical at it. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we should have kept growth. Not bad. Huh. Uh, when's the change in Pacific? Oh, that's good. More business opportunities, probably. Land of opportunity. There you go. Uh, oh. The chief executive sat back in his comfortable office chair, the ghost of a smile on his lips. He just received a call from Tokyo informing him that the negotiations with Americans had concluded and measured trade with the OFM would now be allowed. The opportunity that was presented to Guangdong was incredible. The market of one of the world's superpowers had just opened its doors for goods from Guangdong. Everyone would benefit from the Sony, Fujitsu, Matsushita, and everyone else were salivating the prospect of the sales figures skyrocketing in America. The prospect was so promising that one might be tempted to say it was too good to be true, though that was not entirely incorrect. While it was true that the American market presented a tremendous opportunity, it also promised great difficulties. The scars of the Second World War uh, were still very apparent, and many Americans bore grudges against Japan for the defeat. Surely, the mere passage of the uh, trade deal has already become a political issue. An entry of goods made in Guangdong and other members of the sphere were sure to create a backlash that could lead to boycotts and protests that threatened any investments in America. Yet, the great men of Guangdong were no stranger to adversity. Uh, America was a stagnant of market, waiting to be disrupted by new ideas and new products. Regardless of where they came from, the greater the challenge, the greater the profit. No risk too great. Hmm. Let's give it one more month. Let's see where we're at for halfway. Oh, of the base inflation rate. Oh, I should have read that earlier. Base inflation. Oh. 20%. 0.6. That's really 0.6. Yeah, it, my bad. You know, we should just say with fresh off the presses. A nominal GDP growth. Up to 1%. Still fight poverty, though, by 0.1. That still would be nice. Screw it. My bad. We're just going back to this one. Yeah. I should have read that better. My bad. This didn't cut us too badly, though. So, yeah, 0.61. We're doing academic base pretty quickly. I just wish we could get through this faster. Especially deficient administrative efficiency, but that's going to take a long, long time. The Challengers. Oh, crap. We only this biscuit head. Oh, God dang it. We have 53 seats in total, huh? Oh, God. We lose five? God dang it. Still 32 seats. That's not bad. It is what it is, though. Um, yeah, seven half percent. Position support, but so whatever. There you go. Matters of these pseudo remnants. Amurita Kale knew, oh, was overseeing a rather lively cabinet discussion. The matter handled the issue of the remaining assets of the Sword of Phil companies, Yasuda, not least amongst them, which had been taken over by the government during the recent Yasuda collapse, as these deadweight assets were nothing more or less than a milestone for the government. It was generally agreed that they had to be sold. They all agreed on the benefits, too. They would get expenses off the books and make some money. The point of the debate, therefore, was the, who the assets should be sold to. 
Uh, Sailing Hill, the finance secretary, argued that the contract should be offered to Zhu Jim. As you know well, chief executive, there are countless creative people out there that have the will to make something out of nothing. Even better is the fact that not a single one of these people are tied to existing interests that will wring out every ounce of profitability in it for their own benefit. Matsushita Masaharu, the external secretary, shook his head in disagreement. What Mr. Ho says is well and good, chief executive, but the Japanese are a far safer choice than the Zhu Jim. They have not yet been able to establish themselves properly in the new reality. But the Japanese can offer economic economies of scale, and they have the capital to put the projects to use. Most importantly, the favor, their favor will be invaluable to you in your future endeavorments. Uh, or endeavors. Murray rubbed his chin. They both had good points, and they'd have to think about it before reaching a final decision. The decision was ultimately his, of course. Oh, come on. Oh, fine. We can sell this one, too. What are we doing here? 45, okay. Admin fish, fishes to begin to improve. Increase miscellaneous income. Oh, thank God. And increase liquid reserves. But we only have 45 votes. Not good. So more seats from Sony, Chung Kong, and... Uh, oh, we should be okay then. Should be okay. Yeah, okay, that's a lot of more corruption. 60%. We'll have to do that one then. I'll do that one too. Why not? How many more days for the, for the product cycle? 1952, part 4. Oh, a month. We need to save up some political power. As I spend it immediately, right? Yeah, we need to save it. Um, why are you doing this? Lamb said, holding his revolver to a uh, level to uh, tens center of mass. There's a. Uh, <clears throat> I could ask you the same of you, Anton shot back. I have nothing to say to you, Japanese slave. What do I what I do, I do for people. The triads they provide for us. They're our only salvation. Can't you see those around you? Or did they also make you blind, Officer Lamb? The rain hammered the warehouse roof, filling the sounds with a rapid staccato rhythm. A drill thundered in the lamp's head, flashes of energy pulsed through his veins. Give up, he said. Finally, give up. Give us all up. Turn yourself in, I'll speak for your character. I'd rather a Chinese dog speak for me, Otan smirked, and not a Japanese one. A shot rang out from the second story of the building, and a bullet whizzed past Lamb's ear, missing him by inches. He dove for cover, letting his reflexes do the thinking for him. Splinters of wood burst as he ducked his head and ran under the cover of the boxes. Sparks flew as hot lead dashed across the gunmetal. Lamb shot back blindly, amid the noise, screams, and screams. Guangdong police, a voice from far away, said, Come out with your hands up, silence, and gunfire. Lamb blinked the blood away from his eyes. The last thing he saw was a silk spinning machine as the bullet struck it, snapping the silk threads. The wheel rolled back and back and back. And on it went, rolling and rolling, till the world was bleak and there was no escape. Yeah. 45% off. Our debts with Zhu <sighs> And contracts for sale. A new auction plan out of this, too. Oh, wow! Look at that! Yeah, who do you mean? My god. 49. Holy crap. We can sell to the Zhu Jin, yeah. That'd be good. Oh, oh, flip back over. God dang it. That's not good. Happy May, though, everybody. Yeah, no, I don't want that monthly corruption. Spend a little more money to increase Japan's approval. Which is, oh, that's a cheap, easy way to do it. Uh, we'll do it once. Why not? That really puts us under our control. So now we really have to save uh, political power. We get 2.2 .2 every day, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yes, Putin, France. Oh, look at that. Nice. Good job, guys. So we have this one we got to pass to, which would be easy. Pulling in the tax system. Codifying arrangements to quickly sell off insolvent companies and auction off state lands will only be viable for so long. In good times, the number of bankruptcies falls. Eventually, we'll sell all of our unneeded land. For going down truly stand on its own, we must take a deep look at this tax system. Even if doing so would upset the corporate and Japanese pillars of our economy. It's the only feasible way we can keep the recurring revenue streams so that keep our government afloat and the time frame necessary to support Marita and Lee's other objectives. Our tax system is plagued by exceptions, loopholes, and underreporting, and we do well to plug these leaks. Yeah, we would. Three days left for the new auction plan. Nice. Is there any more, like, volunteers we can send our guys to for war? I like the PTRG stuff. Liam Hal Stewart was on his regular beep uh, through the streets of Koshu, but this time it was somewhere different. He heard a conversation that was generally worth sticking around and listening to. A group. On Zhu Jin, we're having an excited conversation about the Chief Executive Marita's most recent decision. Did you hear they're going to be auctioning the assets from the Suda mess? Well, what are they going to sell? Literally everything. Machinery, his property, furniture, and get this. They'll be looking for us in particular. Zhu Jin. Oh, really? What? What do the Japanese think about him? Oh, it's the usual rubbish. They won't be participating. In fact, they're mad as heck as though they were being allowed to join back in. Best not tell our scummy employer about it, or else will be angrier than 50 of those Oni their funny pictures talk about. Like, 200 of them. If Match started business on the cheap under their noses, the Zhu Jin lost their minds laughing at that prospect. As the Zhu Jin moved on, 
um, to talk about different matters, Lam took a note of what he just heard and concluded that it was the most interesting development. He wondered what else Marita had up his sleeve. I'm not sure if we can get 100% here, but that would be really good to sell to America. I want to try it. Products. So we can sell to the Zhujian in Chinese because it doesn't matter anymore. Oh, so you're back on the market, y'all. Yeah, another corruption one, though. 10%. Which ones can we do that would be fast and can turn around? So I don't want to lose any more support there. Seven and a half, ten percent. We'll do this as fast as we possibly can. So after that, plumbing it. New pipes of revenue. Not enough to fix the plumbing. We need new pipes since it needs new taxes for the greater good of Sun Chung Kong Willet. National Tax Rationalization Ordinance. Piece of Japanese expat support. We'll probably do that one. Uh, if you're into this one, please go ahead. Sell sealing the cracks. Raising tax with alarm bells. A lot, raise alarms for the investment community, threatening a loss of confidence. Better they plug the leaks and rely on economic growth to do the rest. 70, 70, 40, 25, 10. 65, 65, 20. Piece of support. Raise taxes on estates. On upper class homeowners, tax relief, relief for the lower income. Active ordinance reduce the tax burden and income tax versus unleash the watchdogs. Investigates what arrivals in the legislative council for tax evasion. That sounds like it could really backfire though on us. Decrease the solution support, which I don't want to do. Amnesty for a repayment. Our rivals will pay us off in exchange for not being investigated. Increase the arrival support of the ordinance, which we don't need. Honestly, that's not worth it. So we're not going to seal the cracks in. I don't like this one, and I don't like this one either. I don't like either of these. So I guess we're not going to seal the cracks. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is much more hard to pass, though. Hmm. Oh, point one. That's, that's nice. That's good. Yeah, that's looking slightly okay. Um, yeah, looking all right. Hmm. New pipes of revenue. Simply filling in the gaps in our current tax system will not be enough to fund the programs we need to turn Guangdong into something resembling a home for its people. We're approaching the issue of tax reform by expressively widening the tax base, even if it means we angry corporate donors, wealthy Japanese, the Zuzian businesses, or the Chinese masses. They all understand in town that we do this for the good of all. It's the price we must all pay to live in something resembling a civilized society. Kickbacks for our backers. Well, do we really care about that? Increase the miscellaneous income by point, one, point four in total. Nice. We're going to rub his temple, considering the problem before him. It was an unfortunate reality that all, not even even most of the Leco council members, are aligned with Sony Chung Kong, shared his and Lee's vision for the future. And better going down. They were just opportunists like the rest and aligned with the Meridian's faction because they had to align with somebody. That meant their support for each particular reform we proposed couldn't be guaranteed, particularly if they felt that it obviously advanced their interests. As was unfortunately the case with the current proposal, so Meridian was left with a choice. He could build some kickbacks to the firms aligned with the faction into the legislation, thereby giving his more opportunistic backers a clear self interest reason to vote for it, but that also means seeing the level of naked corruption. That was uh, to be the Norman Guangdong, of course, but he was supposed to be fixing it, not participating himself. On the other hand, maybe the only way to pass his agenda and actually succeed at reforming the opposition, or reforming the system. Play the cards you're given. No, we're good. We're literally fine and good. 10% is nice. 10% is here, too. I'll do that one next. That's fine. Really maximizing on uh, interest. Must choose backing. Uh. Well, Master leaning back in his chair, I can certainly get you the votes you need. I need you some help from you in exchange. On the other side of the desk, Marita narrowed his eyes. What's, what kind of help? Uh, sure, why not? Uh, Matsushita smiled. Well, a new product set is approaching, and it would be very helpful if Matsushita Electric could have the first priority for patent approval and safety inspections. I'm not asking for anything to untoward, uh, un, uh, just for the bureaucracy to run efficiency. A smile one for us. Marita considered, but it was true that there was nothing legal about the proposal, but certainly give Matsushita an unfair and anti competitive advantage to get his products for this year on the market before anyone else. Sorry, but it ain't gonna work. Yeah. Increase corruption. Increases monthly household electronics based research fee, which is not bad. But now, nah, we're good. Yeah, towards America. Hey, 3.2 billion, which is even better. Yeah. Oh, healthcare's gonna get better next. So, nascent healthcare, we're gonna get 10% more stability in total. And better monthly population. 10% more. And better army organization regain, which is not the best. But really getting advanced healthcare and world class healthcare is what you really, really want. 
Not the margins. Any businessman knows that he has to spend money to make money. But not when their money is taken away for someone else's gain. You know the programs we laid out on the policy address will fund themselves, okay? At least have plentifully. We can't raise money for the public person, we'll have to ask investors, and they'll give us an even harder time than the Lego. I think Ibuka and Kumar's men will give, the give them a run for their money. Maria threw his war notebook under the desk with a thud. The pages filled to the brim with the names and phone numbers of all 100 Lego members. They're never going to give us all the time of the day, so why do we even bother? Because I'd rather try to convince one of the 100. One out of a hundred people, then ten out of a thousand. Lee hammered his point at him, underlining several names on Akio's discarded notebook. The marginal gain from even one person changing their mind is too big to pass up. Murray chewed on the end of his pencil, trying to remember anything irrelevant about the names Lee had underlined. All of the Jutsu and Hitachi men, yeah, they were colleagues in the let go, but since when did collegiality matter between business competitors? Every vote matters. Yeah, we're good. We're literally fine, don't worry about it. You know what? Seven and a half percent? That's not good enough, so. I'll wait for this one, maybe. Oh, a massive press conference? Part 1952, uh, part 5. So right now, where are we at? It's looking okay. It's not great. All over the newspaper, all over the radio. The shootout of Chao Zhu given Lamb's five minutes of fame. Besides his hospital bed, the radio set blared his achievements for an exemplar for what they call Zhu Zhen. He sat up in his bed and looked around him. The air smelled sickly, faint, sterile. Lamb was in his hospital room. The doctors had wrapped a cast around his right shoulder where a bullet struck pale sunlight. Filtered through the window facing west, the low fog hung un over the Pearl River Delta, obscuring the ships at a pile... That pl piled or plied its wide waterways. I knock on the door. Um, come in, Lamb said. A doctor, a nurse, and the Japanese inspector entered the room. Well, the Japanese inspector was beaming with pride. He shook Lamb's hand vigorously. Congratulations, he said. Officer Hayashi, that discovery simply, simply was astounding. He took a bundle of envelopes from his coat and showed it to Lamb. Here, look, on condemnations, well wishes from the office. Lamb blinked. What about the operation? Did everything go well? Uh, say for a uh, few of our own, the triad cell on Koshu. Uh, was wiped out. Despite the sour note of the news, the inspector remained uncharacteristically cheerful. Your technique, the Kozen technique, as we call it in the office, has drawn the attention of the chief executive himself. Imagine that, Hayashi, a Guangdong police force, with all the funding in the world without compromises. I see Lamb did not know how to feel. Pride, perhaps, satisfaction. He fought hard to keep his logic clear. He caught for what's next for us. For you, Officer Hayashi, a few interviews in the newspaper and on the radio. Help us. Help us make this place better, for you and me. Something resembling hope wash over Lamb, like urns of purifying flame. He nodded, giving in. Sure. Passage of the Financial Solvency and Liquidity Ordinance. Unusually for the Lego, the debate on that day's proposal, the Financial Solvency and Liquidity Crisis, or, or <coughs> uh, Ordinance, was completely focused on numbers. The technicalities and impossible errors in the text, therefore, it lacked anything that carried the slight resemblance to the drama, and even Morita's arrival, Ibuka had remained more or less silent. That would make good sense, Morita thought, after all. They need to build up a better heuristic whereby the future insolvencies left in the care of the state of Guangdong could be permanently taken care of, thereby also formalizing the recent auctions in a fully official press process struck most of the councilmen as a very good idea. It was too logical, since nobody uh, stood to lose anything from it. It was good for a business, good for the government, and good for the various local members' own mercantile ambitions. Yet, though the tycoons are the first pickings of the Asuda carcass, they would by no means be the case next time around. As the local passed the, the ordinance by a massive margin, they joined in courteous applause. Murray stood and bowed respectfully. If only every session were this easy. Look at that, nice. Fantastic. Because that barely did anything to our death. God dang it. Hey, Death looking better, though. That's looking better. Not great, but better. Yes, we're still testing stuff here, do you know? And we're not improving by that much. That's got a lot of interest, though. That's, that's good. It's only 10. Fine. New about the revenue is what we're going to do next, though. Raise taxes on estates. I, uh, I like tax relief for lower income. We don't need any of this, though. Reduce tax burn on, on income tax. To our critics, yes, Chief Executive Marita plans to cut income for the poor, or income taxes. They don't make enough in most cases to be taxed anyway, and the visits from our tax collector often collect nothing for resentment and nothing else. But everyone needs to spend to eat, to buy clothing, to buy amenities, and the odd luxury or two. To be absolutely clear, we will not tax incomes. We do believe in depriving the populace of the means to survive, but we will tax spending. At a lower rate than we would tax our income, but tax nonetheless. This will no doubt prove more stable all sorts of income to the government than increasing the government's cut of a fluctuating wage bill. Hey! Some relief at last. If you want about better health care quality, please go ahead. I feel better already. Yay! Nice. That is fantastic. So next one we're gonna do sure. Why not? Nice. Not bad. Where are we at? Still one percent? Good. We're back up there. Oh look at that. And droop down. Good. Good, good, good. Fifty five percent is not bad. Next one is what? Two hundred. I can do a base of oh let's go fighting for each other for and a finished democracy. Goodbye, finish democracy. Do need you, right? Um Go. 
I don't think we can max it out this time, yeah. That sucks. 20, that's not bad. Hire more scout engineers. That'd be good to do, too. Because this is only 10%, and this is cheaper to do and get faster. There you go. Nice. So now we're at 55 and 67.5. It's not bad overall. The matter of taxation. Murikyo is overseeing another lively cabinet discussion between Matsushita Masaharu and Stanley Ho. The matter at hand this town is how to make an improvement to Guangdong's finances of the sort that successfully outlasts the Merida ministry. This is particularly pressing uh, in the light of the expected financial burden of the Merida government reforms. Ho has always made the first argument. <clears throat> Um, if we really want to go ahead with our plans, Chief Executive, we're, if we're not all talking to a buy, we need a stable base of new revenues. Do you know what that means? It means adjusting taxes to take from where there's wealth and enabling those well-off to spend more. It'll also be easier to tax than relying on municipal incomes. As Matsushita, Scott, this time Mr. Ho really is talking nonsense. Let's be real, Chief Executive. I'd expect the Legislative Council to just bend over and accept plans to tax and spend, even as you pinch money from the pockets of the working class who claim to help. No, we don't need cockeyed innovations like that. Better just enforce the existing laws, which also level the corporate playing field. Marita reflected on the matter at hand. Once again, he realized that Ho and Matsushita both made good points, and he'd have to think about it carefully. The decision was his, as it always had been. I forgot we had to do this one, too. But if we get in more seats, we're just going to get penalized harder. And there's no rush to do that one. There's nothing that we really gain from that. And we could do all this stuff later, you know. But still, it doesn't help us out that much. Corvice, Corvice, slavery. Ooh. Well, we could do that one. And this one, too. A clean start. I'll get that one, too. Yeah, but we're doing all right. You know, overall, not bad. But we do need to talk about how we're going to pay it for everything here, so... Things cost money, you know? But we'll do a tax relief and then tax rationalization ordinance. <coughs> any permanent changes to Guangdong's tax laws and any hope of actually getting a broad swath of Guangdong society agree to pay? That's our ability to pass a proposed raft of tax legislation throughout the Legislative Council. Nobody expects it to be easy. Nobody likes paying the taxmen and our corporate enemies even less so, but we must not stop there. Which I personally hate paying taxes. God, the government. Anyways. I think we were pretty successful. In the past couple episodes, we've been pretty successful throughout, which is pretty pleasing to me. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow to see what else we can do as we move factory workers to Q&A uh, for our product release. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.